I think I was wrong. It happens. And as I've gotten a little older and hopefully a little wiser, I realized that cutting your losses is always the better option than to dig in and continue to lie to yourself. But I think I'm ready to admit it now publicly. I don't think I like Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And more importantly, I think I finally understand what it is that I don't like. I have to say something here that I think is important. I am biased. I have been biased. I've always been a little biased towards Paizo because frankly, they've always treated me very, very well. And I mean that. I mean, as an example, I sit here with 250,000 plus subs after years of being a brand advocate for D&D and Wizards of the Coast could not care less than they do. I mean that. They literally won't even send me a new book. I mean, even with Tasha's, you could see that they sent out books early to dozens of Twitter peeps with a few thousand Twitter followers. Now, before people lose their cool, I'm not saying that I'm some savant because of my subscriber count. I'm saying Wizards clearly is sending out books to influencers and uh, I ain't on that list if you get my drift. Meanwhile, Paizo has personally mailed me tons of books and continues to send me PDFs of their new products. James Sutter, the lead writer for Starfinder, came onto my channel at just a couple thousand subs here before they even changed the Starfinder logo from teal, that original teal that it was, to the orange it is now. I was even part of the Starfinder premiere, uh, which is something that blows my mind. And from Aaron to Jason, Keeley that is, to Owen and James and Dan before they left, and even Bowman and Mona were super friendly to me when I went up and bothered them at Gen Con. Their entire staff is frankly made up of awesome people who have always treated me very, very well. And so why am I telling you guys this? Because I think context matters. I like Paizo. I loved Pathfinder First Edition. I really enjoyed the little bit of Starfinder that I actually got to play. I want Paizo to do well. I am, without a doubt, a little biased. But, and this is a big but, I'm done. At least for the moment with Pathfinder. I really thought I was going to do a bunch of coverage on the channel for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I thought, oh great, I can do class videos and builds and this and that and this, and I just didn't. And I didn't fully understand why I was so disinterested in making those videos. And even the videos I did make about Pathfinder, like uh, my, my kind of popular comparison of Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition and Pathfinder 2e, even in that, I was still fairly critical of the system. I've been running a Patreon campaign through Age of Ashes for Pathfinder 2e for an entire year now, or coming up on a year here in just a few weeks. And I finally understand why. I think I understand why. I don't, I don't care for the system. For me, it can all be summed up with three words. Illusion of choice. The thing, the one thing I loved about Pathfinder 2e was its combat. I loved the idea of three actions, the way that spell casting with multiple actions work. I actually liked the active defending and the way the attack of opportunity were handled and changed from 3.5 and Pathfinder First Edition. I loved the idea that I could make three shoves in a turn if I wanted because that's how the action economy worked. And to be honest, at lower levels, the issues that eventually creep into the game aren't there yet. At lower levels, the combat still feels maybe a little bit frustrating with the multi-attack penalty, which I did mention, uh, but that's about it. Everything else still feels pretty decent, if I'm being honest. But as the players begin to level, patterns emerge. And when I say patterns, I mean cookie cutter patterns, regardless of how the combats begin to take shape, regardless of the variance in enemies and backdrops and surprise ambushes or dockside brawls or dragon totems out in the jungle, the players all do the exact same thing over and over and over and over again. Why? because that's how they built their characters. And I came up with a great analogy when talking to my brother about it. Pathfinder 2e plays like an MMO with rotations. If anyone watching this has ever played World of Warcraft or Star Wars The Old Republic, you'll know exactly what I mean by this. If you haven't, what I mean is there is an optimal set of actions that you need to do over and over and over again to perform well. 
For my swashbuckler player, it's tumble through, panache, sneak attack, confident finisher, over and over and over again. For the ranger, it's hunt prey, hunted shot, throw in a third shot that usually misses. My druid player, just this week, my druid player just this week asked me if they could go back and retcon some of their character abilities because they were getting bored just turning into dinosaurs and dragons to bite and claw things over and over again. I mean, the druid. Historically, which is to say since 3rd edition D&D back in like what, 2000-ish, has been one of the most versatile classes in the game. Here we are 20 years later in Pathfinder 2nd edition. The illusion of choice is so overwhelming in a system built around combat, let's be honest, it is, that it's quite literally boring my player. And before you dismiss what I'm saying here as hyperbole, let me give you some additional context. Back at the end of book two of Age of Ashes, my players TPK, something I haven't had happen in a game in, in 22 plus years behind the screen. I've had plenty of character death, but never a complete wipe before. And so this druid player is already bored of his character just between the levels of nine to 12. That's how little choice they feel they have after initiative has been rolled. That is staggering, guys. That is staggering. We've moved from tier two into tier three play, and the player's character doesn't even have enough in the tank to keep them interested in a system built around both combat and character customization as its strengths. Why? Because of illusion of choice. Let me give you Another example of an issue that I feel lends to this constant repetition. Let's talk about spells, casting magic, and the action economy. Here's probably the biggest lapse in judgment I've had when initially evaluating Pathfinder 2e. Originally, I loved the concept and mechanics presented. And honestly, even with the critique I'm about to give, I still think it's so close to being spectacular, but ultimately, it only compounds our previous issues of illusion of choice and is a significant factor in giving the players a feeling of being forced into a set of actions each turn. If you don't know, the system is simple on the surface. Every spell has a set number of actions that either can or in many cases must be used to cast them. Typically this is two actions. So a level five banishment spell takes, you guessed it, two actions to cast. Additionally, some spells can be cast with more or less actions, and that will affect how powerful the spell is when it's cast. The best example of this is Magic Missile. If you spend one action, you get one dart, two actions gives you two darts, and three gives you three. Go figure. It's beautifully elegant on the surface, but the issue is no matter how many actions you use to cast Magic Missile or a similar spell, you still spend the exact same spell slot, which Going back to the point I'm driving home in this video leads to exactly zero players using the spell without its full set of actions. Anything less than three is literally less efficient. And Pathfinder 2nd Edition is all about maximizing and efficiency. The biggest reason, however, might be the one thing I've talked about with a fiery passion of hatred before, feats. I don't know how, I got sucked into forgetting just how much I hated what feats did to the game in Pathfinder 1st Edition, but damn! Even with the feat buckets, there is still a sense of builds. Even with feat buckets, which I've praised in the past as being a better option than traditional feat trees, and I do think it is better than Pathfinder 1st Edition's pure feat trees, ultimately still has more holdover than I originally thought. And you can tell. You can absolutely tell that the players are creating synergies between their character options. And I mean, that's not some big secret, nor is it unexpected. I mean, come on, the, that's the most obvious headline for a newspaper ever. Quote, gamers make good character for game they're playing, end quote. I mean, come on, it's not their fault. And dismissing them as just simply power gamers is a very lazy opinion. But the way that feats still synergize in Pathfinder 2e all do one thing. They push the players towards a set of action to utilize those synergies. That's it. And when the players don't do the things that their characters are the best at, they are literally purposefully playing suboptimally. AKA, these feats, even from pools and not direct feat trees, are creating an illusion of choice 
for my players. Which is why, after a year of Pathfinder 2e and two sets of characters, I see them taking the same actions over and over, regardless of that variance of circumstances of the combats that they've been engaged in. And all this leads me to one conclusion. I want to quit playing Pathfinder 2e. I don't enjoy it. It doesn't give me that buzz and excitement that I get from playing other games. Now, I want to say something. This was not the video I wanted to write this week. This was not the video that I sat down to write. I wanted to bang out a script for a new Kill Your Party With. I pulled out Tasha's to maybe do some more coverage over there. I had a long conversation Okay, with Dungeon Dudes about doing a collaboration over our disagreement on Healing Word just this past week. And I even pitched an idea to Monty and Kelly about putting some money on the line and turning the collaboration into a bit of a competition for charity. But this is the video that came out. And the only explanation I could think of as to why I literally couldn't get my fingers to type anything else other than this video was because I have such a passion for Pathfinder and even Paizo. And I'm still so disappointed in the direction that 2E took. The system is so crunchy. And the only thing saving us from the tedium of that crunch is good bones for combat. But after giving a year of my life to this game, I feel like even the combat has begun to let me down. And let me get ahead of the terrible comments that are going to be dismissive saying, well, Cody, Pathfinder is a system all about crunch. You just want to tell stories or... <laughs> Or what did you expect? Paizo makes crunchy games. To which I'll say this. If you think that all Pathfinder First Edition cared about was the crunch, that tells me you don't know your history in role-playing games. When Wizards left 3.5 behind for Fourth Edition and caused all that drama with their licensing for their third-party companies, Paizo didn't just make a crunchy 3.5, it did the opposite. It literally did the opposite of that. It simplified the game, even if only a tiny bit. It made the game easier and faster with changes to spot and listen and how initial skills were handled. And when you, when you get feats, uh, while at the same time still staying close enough to 3.5 to allow people to at least continue using their old book collections. And just because I find this fascinating, the snapshot in time when Pathfinder was the number one selling game in the world and it had supplanted Dungeons and Dragons, at that moment, Pathfinder was the least complicated version of D&D available on the market. It was easier to understand than 4th edition. And while it was, it sold more books than anything else. And it never fell out of that top spot until 5th edition was released in 2014, which then became the easiest version of D&D to play and reclaimed the number one spot. And I have a lot more to say on this game. I have a lot more I want to say about the structure of the Adventure Pass and the way that that format clearly affects how Paizo presents their game. I want to talk about how the core combat system with their traits feeds into Illusion of Choice because their effects are way too small. I want to talk about how the trait system makes the game basically unplayable if Pathfinder 2e isn't the only game you play every week without, like, condition cards. I want to talk about the pros and cons of Attacks of Opportunity now that I've had an entire year under my belt with it. But I'm not going to. At least not in this video. At this point in my script, I, I was already on page four, so I'll leave those topics for another day. What I will say is this. Pathfinder 2nd Edition is still absolutely a game that I could and would recommend to certain groups as their go-to game system. It has a lot to offer. The Paizo's team is still very passionate about not only their game, but this style of role-playing games, and it shows. Their best series and monster design are excellent. I genuinely still enjoy their Lost Legends line as well. I've got a few of those books sitting on my shelf. Their setting is really starting to grow on me. If your group gets together for one shots on occasion and just wants to dungeon crawl through a labyrinth of a dungeon, seriously play this game. There is nothing better on the market in my opinion. If you don't care that your character does the same thing over and over in combat because you're just getting together with friends over a few beers to play and you really want to feel like you're just kicking a monster's ass, well then guess what? Play this game. If you enjoy a style of gameplay where your game master never talks in first person, 
because you guys all find that super cheesy, play this game. I mean it on that last one, by the way. If you want to look down and say to your Game Master, uh, I want to use a diplomacy check to make an impression, so I want to engage with the NPC in dialogue for at least one minute, and I want to make uh, this check against his will DC to improve his attitude towards us by one step on a success or two steps on a critical, as listed on page 246 in the core rulebook, then you should play Pathfinder 2E. I'm not saying Pathfinder 2E isn't for everyone. Just that for the time being, at least, it's not for me. I'm not even saying I think Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition has more interesting combat. In fact, <laughs> if I had to, I would probably call it a draw. The thing is though, if my choice is between a slightly unsatisfying combat system that feels repetitive and another slightly unsatisfying combat system that feels repetitive, and those are my two choices, then I'm gonna pick the one that's less complicated so at least I have more time to roleplay, which I also enjoy. You know, I was really nervous to do this video this week and I just wanna say thank you to all the people who reached out to me on Twitter to convince me to go ahead and pull the trigger on making a critique video, even for a company that I love as much as Paizo. You know, there's a history when you do a really strong critique for companies that sort of, you know, work with you and uh, that you sort of uh, are kind of reliant on of that not going 100% great. Look at the auto industry, look at the, how look at the TTRPG uh, industry, look at, uh, you know, Linus and Jay's two cents on their recent videos. So thank you guys for convincing me to do it. At the end of the day, even though I wish Paizo well, this is a video that I just, I wanted to make. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna pass it over to you guys. What do you guys think? For those of you who have played Pathfinder 2E, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Uh, for those of you that don't have a lot of experience in Pathfinder, but you play a lot of D&D and you just watch my channel because you, you thought this might be interesting, you know, how do you guys feel about 5E's combat? Is it, is, do you feel like the things I talked about for Pathfinder are equally applicable to D&D 5E? Let me know in the comment section down below. I wanna give a massive thank you to all the incredible patrons over at welcomeadventures.com. Guys, thank you so much for all of the wonderful support. Uh, 2020 has been a rough year, not just for me, but for a lot of us. And so your support over there means a ton to me. It means a ton to my family. If you guys enjoy what I do here, you wanna support more content like this and snag some rewards for yourself, like meetings with me, gaming with me, some awesome maps uh, that we put out every month. Uh, WelcomeAdventures.com is a great place to support the channel and snag some rewards for yourself. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I would love to have you subscribe. I put out videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more, so if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.